she got me a guitar in these chambers and all that thing. I never picked up that violin again for at least another 15 years. Yeah, sure. And I had the best of times. The most time I got to spend with him right. in years because our worlds become very separate. This was a way of bringing them together. And because I was watching so many great artists come through, they were writing all the time. Mm -hmm. And I would pick up little kind of shortcuts. I've got a lyric idea, don't have a melody. Okay, uh, split the line in half, come to this part, and just little tricks. And, and so I started writing a lot more. Right. And I was doing a show called 24 at the time, and I started to write a lot. Mm -hmm. I was in a good place, I was in a comfortable place, because I was so excited about doing that show, and it was so successful. Yeah. And then when we finished the nights, really 
do it. And it's such an interesting, I mean, you have to understand, I can't even count on my hands the number of plays I've done. And I've been on Broadway and I've been to the National Arts Center and I've played great theaters and, and, and done extended runs for a year and a half of, of something like So my experience with a live audience is there. Right. And so I made the terrible mistake of thinking that that somehow was going to help me in playing a live show. Uh -huh. And it was the exact opposite because what I had factored in, which is so stupid, it was like my V8 moment. I smacked right. myself in the head. I'm playing songs that are from my own life. There's no character that's separating me yeah, yeah. and the audience. And I'm reading someone else's words. And, and once I realized that, then I started explaining, this is what I was going through when I wrote this song, and this is why I wrote it. And maybe you've had a similar experience. Right. And hopefully at the end of the night, whatever preconceived notion I might have of that audience, and whatever preconceived notion they might have of me, mm -hmm. it's gone. You know? And that we realize we have a lot more in common. And that's, you know, I've never experienced that. That's on a very personal, personal level. I've had experiences on stage as an actor that are extraordinary as well, but for very different reasons. Yeah. It's because of the technique and the craft that the six actors on stage use together to make the audience feel something. Right. That's very similar to a band. And I get that. But when the song is yours, yeah. and the song is personal, and you're asking someone who's most likely hearing it for the very first time to open up and let that in. Yeah, connect. That's a huge ask. Sure. And when I say how generous the audiences have been, they have really made an effort to do that. And for that, even if, you know, gosh, when I get hit by a bus or something like that, building today, it will be with a smile. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about that the stigma of actors trying Roger I can tell you why something works and something doesn't. I've made over 100 films. I've done three major television shows. I couldn't tell you why 24 was the success it was. Because it's fucking awesome. And bless your heart. <laughs> and, 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 and why something works was. I can't tell you. You do feel it when it's going. Yeah. But it's, you know, I've done things where it's very just incredible cast of actors together and a great director and the script had all the promise in the world sure. and for whatever reason the chemistry didn't work yeah. Yeah. So, no, that you kind of justify so your own and we loved so much what we were doing it's all and it's, it's exactly the same when I'm 55 and it's for all for the same reasons because I love these dudes that I get to play the guitar with and bang my head you know we were playing a club in Cleveland and is jam packed, and but we're only talking about 250 people right. in the which band. Yeah, and I can't figure out why I'm not getting a guitar change. If I look over and my guitar tech is in a fight <laughs> with a little person who's holding a cow stool in between two huge guys and trying to save this woman. Right. Wow. And uh, and it was that was like that every night. I can't describe to you the fun that we had. And the fact that anybody showed up at all in France, and, uh, you worry about the storytelling in between the songs. And, and for whatever reason, people have given us a chance. And, um, and so far, it's, it's, it's worked out really well. All right, we're going to take a quick break. But there's so much more to talk about with actor and musician Keeper Sutherland coming up in just a few minutes right here on Never Meet Your Heroes.
such as depression, stress, anxiety, sleeping, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential, and it's so convenient. Get help at your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions. Plus, chat and text with your therapist. If you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time. Appliances and systems have in common is that they die at the worst possible time. Home appliance and system repairs can easily cost thousands of dollars, and they're usually not covered by homeowners insurance. First American Home Warranty can protect you from the cost of fixing or replacing your major appliances and systems with plans starting as low as 25 bucks per month. When a covered home appliance breaks, First American will send a qualified and insured technician to fix or replace it, saving you time and money. Last year, First American saved customers over $180 million in repair and replacement costs, which is why First American has been a home warranty leader for over 35 years. Protect your home right now. Call First American Home Warranty at 800-908-5557. Don't wait until you're stuck with a massive repair bill. Call First American right now for a free no-obligation quote at 800-908-5557. That's 800-908-5557. Message and data rates may apply. Please don't text while driving. If you've been in business more than 20 minutes, you've probably printed your logo on all kinds of promotional products. We all know logos work because they're on everything from the top of skyscrapers to the bottom of shoes. Ever wondered why or how to best use your logo to grow your business? Let us show you today for free. We're for Imprint, promotional product experts at your service. We're giving away the latest issue of Amplify, the digital magazine that reveals promotional product success stories absolutely free to everyone who texts up to 2 to 88988. At 4 Imprint, we make your logo look perfect on thousands of promotional items. With our 100% guarantee, it'll be right the first time, on time, every time. Your free e-magazine will reveal invaluable insights that can attract new customers, build your brand, and grow your business. Get the latest issue of Amplify. Theater has rules. Right. I don't think we gotta worry about the light on that road. You can laugh at us. Rocks. But it's your usual thing. So I would save your appreciation if you play yeah. any for the end of the performance. And listen. And if you don't, we'll show you. Sometimes I wish it was like that, actually. <laughs> and, and for a really good show, you want them from the first down beat. You want them out of their seats. You want them moving. Yeah, no rushing the stage. You want you want anarchy. Right. You want excitement. You want what I used to watch the Beatles do to an audience. Yeah. That's what you're going for. Whoa. And so he's absolutely a city. And his, it's an incredibly astute observation because oh. this is your band's bar making up. Yeah. His tour. Uh, we have not hit that. Must be this yet. area that's version um, of but it's, the but sand dunes. Uh, it's that are successful. They're not even talking about yeah, no. it. No, no. In relation to Taylor Swift or kind of a, yeah. an anomaly. Pop, some pop, and I'm a breast of that stuff. Right. You know, pop, country, rap. Right, and in fact, streaming uses that as an example of, no, these people get paid. Yeah, right. We're talking about the point zero 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 one percent of artists. Uh, so the live show is everything. And, and the truth is, people are going out to see them. Yeah. And that's because they do matter. And so it's a really astute observation of Jason. So he's also figured out how to sell everything. And he's a very smart guy like that. <laughs> um, yeah, that energy that exists at a show, it, it really is the one place on the planet Earth where, where you can get that. And I sometimes wonder if it's something that I've never done drugs in my life. <laughs> as a kid and then didn't make it yeah and i wrote that song out of a real place of anger because i miss those people and i miss what they would have done uh yeah this was back when i was 19 20 21 years old and these were some really creative smart people and they just tried something didn't work out for them and, and a couple of them didn't make it and nobody knows what their physical body that their chemistry is the makeup and how it's going to react and i've seen some of that stuff oh, happen so you were a friend of river obviously yeah. yeah we did stand on me that's a perfect example although why on earth would you be thinking about physicality and yeah. your character yeah. I just loved him to death, and I had so much hope for him. Yeah. And again, that's just another example of that did not have to happen. This is Never Meet Your Heroes. I'm Scotty.
and my guest today is actor and musician Kiefer Sutherland. Oddly enough, I was at the Viper Room the night where he really passed because my friend Al Jorgensen, who's in the band called Ministry, he had called me and said, hey, I'm in town. I'm jamming at the Viper Room tonight with like Flea and Johnny Depp. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, come on down, come hang out. And, but I, I will say, from the second I walked in the room that night, it was like, it was like uh, yeah. And I, I mean, I certainly wasn't there that night. And uh, I remember hearing about it the next morning. I think I was in Europe shooting. But it was, again, one of those moments. And uh, again, I didn't know. I knew River professionally. Yeah. And you know, I just certainly in the context of the film like an older brother. Yeah. And I liked him so much. But my heart, I do, I do remember just heartbroken over that. Yeah. And he said, order a drink. I ordered a Coke. He said, no, 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 yeah. no order a drink. And wow. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I was incredibly lucky. What yeah. happened to so many other people, tragically, uh, has not happened to a lot of other people. Right. And if you certainly navigated your early 20s like that, and me. Yeah, like yeah. when they were 23, 24. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, that's now you're done. You can't even have a glass of wine yeah. without it, like leading to hookers and heroin. Like, you know what I mean? Like for real. And uh, I'm like, I'd like to think that when I get older, I could have a glass of wine with dinner and yeah. be a human being. The real thing is the work. The work you can't. Say. Yeah. Uh, that's been my experience. I've uh, never been late for a day's work in my life. I haven't missed one. I've right. been sick through one, and I take that very seriously. And so I find it, I work a lot. Uh, right. <laughs> they sent me the new record two, three days ago or something, so I've been listening to it quite a bit. And uh, the song Saskatchewan. I'm going to Saskatchewan. Well, that's the road I thought we could make it over there. I'm going back to Saskatchewan. Is that a true story? Yeah. I have a twin sister, and my mom tragically had had three strokes in one year, and the third one was really, really bad. And my sister called and said, I need you to get on a plane. Mom's had a stroke. She's in the hospital. She's still alive, but I don't think she's going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I got on the plane, and I was just sitting there. And normally I sleep on the plane because I still smoke, which is really stupid, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do, right. and uh, and so I would just normally just kind of crash out until I could get out to wherever I was going and have a sleep. Well, obviously, well, I'm I'm sleeping sleeping just, another day. Yeah. And I was just thinking about my mom's mortality, mortality huh? period, trying to put this into perspective because I didn't think this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the bones of Saskatchewan. Right. I wrote it, uh, and then I get to Toronto where my family lives, and I get to the hospital.